for the second time this year. We're about to go racing in the European Le Mans series, but it is a good getaway from Paul Lafargue as they head down into Verary for the first time. Now into Virage du Lotel. A few looking for the inside line into Camp Corner, including the Philippe Ugrand driven United Autosports number 22. And there's a spinner in the mid pack. It's a Virage car. It's Is a it Virage, Virage or Panis? And it's Tony Wells in the number 19 team Virage car because the 65 Panis car got safely through. Manuel Maldonado is in 10th. We've got the 22 United Autosports car of Philippe Ugrand getting involved in this uh, group. Has managed to. Edge his way by the number nine car. Can he get clear and get onto terms with the cool racing car ahead? Lorenzo Jonas, Fluxa. Jonas Reed has lost two places in about two corners there, so I don't know whether that's a genuine struggle for the Iron Lynx Proton Orica. As Johnny Edgar goes from a very last minute dive for the race lead, and that's your classic Virage DuPont manoeuvre. Oh, wow, all four off there for the Iron Lynx car. Side-by-side -side action around the outside. Philippe Ugrand went on Fluxa. So you said that they had flipped switch positions. Fluxa now back to fourth position. And that was a terrific overtake into the double right at Bose. Here to the left-hand side of your picture is Philippe Ugrand on Paul Lafargue. So United up against EDEC. And this is for second place. I think that's done. I think that is done. He was certainly ahead at the split, he's now ahead on the road. <laughs> then you've also got to provide the space, as there, Hiroshi Hamaguchi will get ahead of Duncan Cameron for third position in LMGT3, and for whatever reason, Duncan Cameron just struggled maybe on the brakes or acceleration. Side by side for the LMP3 lead, Torsten Kratz in the white car, Matthew Richard Bell in the dark blue. And Matthew Bale to the inside line of Bose, but he's washed it out a bit too much. And there's a shoulder barge there from Torsten Kratz to give the lead back to WTM by Rinaldi. Superb stuff from these two bronze star drivers in LMP3. Close oh, enough. The hit. There was a hit with the new leader in LMP3, Matthew Richard Bell. So that could have been disaster for Oof. both got the change for the lead now and it was down the Mistral straight Luca Iotto to the outside made that look relatively easy tires fuel saving both now Battle for second in how about the Lambo? Yeah. yeah oh over the curbs there from Hiroshi Yamaguchi that's fine that's fine at least he's not airborne like Jonas Reed it's not particularly fast though compared to the car guy Ferrari and Hamaguchi versus Kimura, the two Japanese drivers. Now it has worked for him, and uh, I think that was perfectly legal. He I'm always, sure had, was. always had two Goodyear tyres on the right side of the white line. All right, so there's a conversation to be had there, no doubt. From a long way back, the number eight car in LMP3, down the inside of car four, that was for fourth position. Here's the Orland-sponsored AO by TF Car coming in to serve a penalty. Has dropped already to sixth place. Next up is Ollie Colwell, but I don't think Ollie's close enough to be troubling that. He's not, so it uh, drops that car down from third to sixth. Here he is, car 43, from the race lead. Brush, and brush up for the Interiorpol car. Quick slurp of water there for Ritoma Miata. So he's staying on board for another 40, 45 minute stint. And Collard now perhaps about to be overtaken by the Formula Racing car, which was fully off the road. Coming up to senior corner, Mike just have kept enough tyre the right side of the white line. And that's, uh, if it's legal, it's a great overtake by Conrad Ooh. Lawson. The 88 car, that is the interior pole competition car of Guy Askey. And that has stopped on the exit of turn 14. We are under safety car, we are under safety car. Trouble for what had been the race leader in LMP3, though. And oh this is dear. the car that has just been given the wave by. So the 12 of Leo Weiss. What's happened there? A moment or two ago, I saw him in second. He's literally only just stopped. This is at Galaban corner, turn 12. Side by side between EDEC 
and into Europol competition, but it's Jakobsen from Jop van Aert. And here is Jop under the pressure from Tom Dillman, who suddenly fires the car to the right-hand side as they go down the start-finish straight. Jakobsen will be loving, loving this because he wants the two behind him to be slowed as much as possible. That was a very good run for Casper Stevenson on Ricardo Perra. He seemed to sort of change down and find a, a lower gear at turn six and seven to drive the Aston Martin out of Sant Bom and through the kink, and it's worked a treat up to third position. Oh, and it's trouble, slowing, trouble. slowing. So is that a tyre? Because I was bothered that Malta Jakobsen might have gone a bit too fast here and cool racing, hands on heads, the no, car will go no further. It's not a tyre, it's not a tyre. So the car has stopped inexplicably and we have a new race leader at Le Castellet in the second round of the European Le Mans series. It's Jop von Outert. Full course yellow, full course yellow. One is even by the look of things. Jop von Outert straight back onto the loud pedal. Tom Dillman right with him. It's not a race anymore, Johnny. It's a duel. They are waiting for tyres here, or at least no, a tyre. Were well, they not taking a penalty? No, it's a tyre. And here comes Hasclo to the inside line of Bose now. Ignore the number 60 Porsche. That's a lap down at least. Julian Andlauer, though, is going to be right with them in terms of pace and might be able to help out the Proton Run Iron Dame's car in this whole scenario. That rapid pit stop from the 55 means they have got the lead of this race. I told you. Yep, spirit of race from GR Racing, then the Iron Lynx Lamborghini. Oh, what's, which car is that? Dillman to the lead, so that's the race leader. Clement Novalak has stopped on the main start, oh, finished wow. straight. Novalak no longer in the race. Tom Dillman to the race lead. And Tom Dillman, who had led going into the full course yellow recently, is back to the front. Paul Luke Chatin to the high side and into senior corner. He gets it. Brilliant overtake that again from the draft. And Louis Delatraz just seems to have nothing at his disposal to defend that. Side by side between Jot van Aerte and Ben Hanley. And this is for second and third. But not really. But not really. Ben, but will, uh, ben will be told, I'm sure, to let him go and then stick with him. Yeah, OK. Fair enough. Paul Luke Chatter sniffing a podium here. Absolutely. And potentially right. a second. I mean, if he can get ahead of Hanley, Se then that'll be a second place finish. It will finish. be second place. That's the point. I think he's going to do it and do it reasonably easily here. So, ben. is this more of an issue for Ben Hanley rather than allowing Jot van Aert at through? He's got no reply Again, to is Paul it? Luke Chatter. An absolutely incredible result for inter Europol competition in the end. They will still be very happy. They had to kiss goodbye to the race lead for one of their cars, but the other one was sitting pretty in second. It inherited the race lead and the race win of the 2024 four hours of Lucas Delay. It's Sebastian Alvarez, it's Vlad Lomko, and it's Tom Dillman who are victorious here in the south of France in LMP2. Coming home for the first victory for this trio. Together, the 55 car, Spirit of Race, take the win in LMGT3 after a titanic battle up and down the order. And it's going to be Richard Mille by TDS, the 29 car, Matthias Besch, bringing home this car for an LMP2 Pro Am win. Car 15 then, RLR M Sport and Gael Julien driving on fresh air, Unreal. it seems. But he Unreal. got it to the finish. The three driving the 43 car, very, very happy after their 125 laps. They win it by 14 seconds over Cool Racing's combination of Alejandro Garcia, Paul Luc Chatin and Fred Vesti, and also making the podium AO by TF. Louis Delatraz brought that to the line. LMP2 Pro-Am is won by Richard Mille by TDS, the 29 crew of Rodrigo Sales, Matthias Besch and Grégoire Sorce. And in LMP3, it's RLR M Sports who win seven laps off the LMP2 pace, but only by 3.7 seconds. Gael Julien 
driving in the slippers to keep Wyatt Brickercheck's chasing DKR engineering car behind. Spirit of race win for the first time in three years and never before with this current driving combination. They outpace the 63 Lamborghini of Iron Lynx and completing the podium. Again, a different manufacturer, Aston Martin and Racing Spirit of Le Mans.